Good afternoon. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the Nexus project based at Queen's University. Um, it's a project in, in progress, so I can, I'm kind of going to give you a bit of an, an update on where it's at at the moment. Um, it's primarily uh, a scenario planning uh, applied to the food system and focused on Northern Ireland um, and working with stakeholders within the food system in Northern Ireland, food and farming. Um, other project aims include um, creating, creating opportunities for collaborative policy learning and action and generating new learning about how to manage societal transitions. And the, the scenario planning is particularly focused on uh, climate change, global, uh, looking at glo a global scenario, and also uh, fossil energy, future fossil energy availability. Uh, a quick overview of the presentation. I want to clarify um, what, what we mean by nexus thinking, if, if you've, you know, you're not familiar with that jargon yet. Um, then a quick project description and also a little bit of clarification about uh, how, how we're using scenario planning in this project. And then finally, um, looking at the findings to date, primarily the interviews with, with participants and the first scenario planning workshop that we held recently. So Nexus thinking, you, you may, you've probably heard this, this term already. It's, it's kind of the latest jargon to do with uh, you know, sustainable development and so on. Um, typically, it refers to the water, energy, food security nexus globally. Um, one example would have been John Beddington's report, The Perfect Storm, and that graphic comes from his, his report. And it's about the interlinkages between uh, energy, energy supply and demand, food security, uh, water security, and, he, and also sometimes they put in climate change as well. And implicit in that as well, Implicit in that as well is um, uh, that population growth globally is a driver behind all of this. So you can see, you know, there's a refer, it refers to increased demand for energy, 50% by 2030, uh, and so on. So behind that, there's this, there's this assumption that population is really exacerbating these, these converging crises. Um, what's sometimes missing in, in the nexus... Um, uh, discourse is reference to inequalities of, of, of distribution, wealth, power, access to resources. So in, in, our, in our project, we're, you know, we're trying to be mindful of, that, of, of those gaps. Uh, this is a, a, an overview of the project. Um, primarily, it's, it's about the scenario planning workshops. We've done interviews with stakeholders that, that inform that process by establishing what are the different range of views amongst them, different perspectives, um, what, are the, what are the current issues that, 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 that they're all kind of uh, discussing at the moment, uh, and also eliciting from them ideas for addressing these challenges, particularly uh, cross-sectoral collaborative initiatives. Um, we've also got a, a complementary expert speaker programme it's, it's separate from the scenario planning, uh, and, and the, these speaker events are public as well. We recently had Tim Benton from Leeds talking about climate tipping points and extreme weather events, and we've based uh, one of the scenarios on, on his work. So there's a, you know, there's a linkage between the two things there. And we have an advisory group that's, that's made up of um, project partners and stakeholders as well, and they've, they've been very helpful in advising on the development of the project. Yeah, what does scenario planning involve? This is how, we, how we've understood it in the project and, and used it. Um, uh, so it, it involves analysing existing and emerging trends, particularly global trends, that, that are affecting a specific policy area or system, identifying a range of, of plausible futures, uh, creating narrative descriptions of alternative future scenarios, um, and what we, what we did in this project was to take two global scenarios, plausible, I hope you'll believe, um, and then getting the participants to translate them down to the Northern Ireland level. Um, you then test, you can then test existing 
or propose strategic options within your alternative scenarios to see well, how, how robust are these, these options. Um, given that we had limited time in our workshops and, and that given the, the sort of cycle where the going for growth strategy is at at the moment, that it's sort of a, at a period of you know, pending review or whatever, we decided to go for more blue sky thinking and envis envisioning a, um, a sustainable food system in the future rather than testing the going for growth strategy. Um, so having done that, you then, you then adapt, fortify your strategy and develop new options and contingent, contingency plans accordingly. Um, so in our scenario planning workshops, we had st uh, stakeholders from uh, NGO organisations, uh, government agencies, farming sector and, and so on. And uh, what, you know, what do we mean by stakeholders? I mean, we're all stakeholders in the food system, but um, people we, we selected or the organisations were part of a wider issue network. Um, and by that I mean people who are either involved in contributing to policy making, policy development, or involved in some form of advocacy and uh, wish they were involved in policy de development. So it's, it's that wider network. Um, and then part, part in the first workshop, uh, we got people into smaller groups envisioning an ideal food system, say in 2030, and then backcasting from the future to now, how did we get there? What were the, what were the key strategic steps and milestones uh, along the way to get to that food system? Um, in the next, oh yes, and we also um, looked at these two global scenarios. One, the first one based on Tim Benton's work, uh, and it, it, it basically kind of takes, uh, it imagines that there have been extreme weather events around the world that have impacted on uh, breadbasket regions in different parts of the world, um, leading to multiple crop failures uh, and having a big impact on the, su the supply of uh, grain and cereals for food and for feed grain and so on. Uh, this has already happened on a smaller scale. We've seen the impacts already, but he, this scenario just imagines it on a more... A, 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 a larger scale, and the second the second scenario was about fossil energy scarcity. And in order to try and come up with a plausible scenario rather than peak oil that no, nobody really believes in now, um, this is based on um, existing converging crises in the Middle East around uh, environmental crises, water scarcity, um, uh, political instability, and it env envisages in, uh, a, a these converging and, 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 and to the point where oil supplies are disrupted and has a major effect on world uh, uh, energy supply. Uh, in the second workshop, which we have planned in June, we will then uh, test these uh, the, um, um, ideal visions and, 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 and strategic pathways within the Northern Ireland scenarios that the, the stakeholders created and wind tunnelling means just testing the robustness, the resilience and so on. Um, and then you, as I said, you develop uh, contingency plans or you fortify, fortify your strategy um, accordingly. And we'll also be looking at uh, discussing possible collaborative initiatives as well. Um, so moving on to the initial findings, right? This is, this is about the interviews that were held. Um, prior to the scenario planning with stakeholders and what, um, what emerged was that there, were, there seemed to be three uh, groupings and overlapping uh, in the sense that they had, you know, they had some common um, agreement or there were some members of these groups who had one foot in one camp and a foot in the other camp but there were three, three groupings one thing that they all had in common was that they all stressed, every single person, or 15 people interviewed, they all stressed the need for environmental protection and, uh, along with farm sector viability. Um, the first group, if you like, over here, a re a, a, quite a substantial group, but not the biggest, uh, were in favour of local non-intensive farm production, so relocalised farming and, and, and so on tend to be more urban-based people involved in local food initiatives, NGOs, and, and, and so on, but not, not exclusively. 
Um, they were also, their, their position was also associated with a lot of other concerns to do with food, food, food security, food poverty, um, health, diet related issues, uh, food waste and regional food footprint and so on. So quite a range of different issues these people you know, were, were expressing or, or, or bringing up. At the other end, and this was the smallest grouping, really small, uh, where the emphasis was much more on the need for regional production growth. This is the going for growth st strategy, really. Ten minutes, right? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, turbocharged uh, and and with sustainable intensification to to mitigate the environmental harm. But even at this end, you know, there was a recognition that there was a need to think about the environment and so on. Uh, the biggest group was in the middle, uh, by far the biggest group, and. It, across all the sectors, NGOs, agri-food business and so on, the farming sector, the emphasis was on quality of produce, um, environmental standards and a number of people suggested we need a, a, a Northern Ireland equivalent of the Republic's origin green strategies, marketing, you know, the farm sector has been green and so on. Uh, there was also, also associated with um, uh, proposals for a post-Brexit farm subsidy the rewards environmental stewardship, uh, public money for public goods. Common themes uh, across all of these uh, groupings were uh, talking about Brexit, the risks of Brexit, of uh, losing subsidies, of losing uh, the environmental regulation, a race to the bottom, emphasis on cheap food. Um, most people talked about extreme unseasonal weather and it seems there's a shift in thinking about climate change now that it's not just something that's going to happen decades ahead. People are seeing it now, they're seeing the impact now. So there's a change, there's a change in view about that. Uh, I'll skip that one, it was interesting, but I'll skip it. It was about communicating climate change. Uh, renewable heating incentive, nearly everyone brought that one up and said that it's done untold damage to uh, the agenda to, uh, bring, you know, to bring forward renewables and, and the sustainable a sustainability agenda generally, leadership came up repeatedly. The word, we need leadership, we lack leadership. There's a lack of leadership in terms of environmental governance, in terms of agri-food strategy. Um, and governance, there were a lot of issues around that, mainly to do with um, expand, in, expanding the numbers of, of stakeholders involved in, in policy making. There's a uh, feeling that it was too too exclusive at the moment, it would benefit from being expanded, and also that public consultation and debate around food and the environment is too limited or it's not genuine enough, there needs to be more uh, wider engagement and, and debate with the public around that. Um, and, and also the need for less siloed thinking about food and the environment. There are a number of fora around looking at climate change, looking at food poverty, looking at food waste and so on. And uh, there were suggestions for the need for some sort of structure or process that would create a more, more holistic, joined up approach. And just this quote here, I think, sums up this, this, this uh, major majority view, really, that, 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 that seemed to be coming out of the interviews. I think, I'll read it out. I think there's a movement out there of people who want to promote quality, add value, added value, a sustainable market, but who don't see Northern Ireland having a future as one of the big players in town. Northern Ireland, it could fit into a decent sized field in Poland or Brazil. Productivist culture just seems to be a race to the bottom and everybody ends up competing on price. Why would you take a beautiful region and make it the same as everywhere else? And, and that really, I felt, was the most, one of the most articulate uh, um, expressions of that position. Um, I'll skip this. Um, uh, it's pr proposed models of good practice that people suggested, but just the, the top one, um, a number of people referred to DIRA's greenhouse gas stakeholder group, that it's embraced, brought in more stakeholders, and it's, it's, a, it's a big step forward in terms of policy development. And similarly, Climate NI's engagement with non-government stakeholders working with, with DIRA. Um, I'll skip the rest. So the scenario planning workshop we had recently, uh, we had this envisioning exercise. And uh, these are some of the, some of the themes, proposals that came, came forward. 
diversification of farming, um, that we need more than just livestock and dairy, we need other forms of farming and food production, and diversification within farms, so more mixed farming. Um, diversi diversification of subsidies, quite a few people re referred to horticulture, you know, it would be good if that was supported. Support for models of, 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 good, of best sustainable practice, uh, reduction in intensive farming, prioritisation of environmental management, fair farm gate prices and, and farm business viability. The sustainable land management strategy um, should support development of sustainable, actively support development of sustainable farming, not just be there mitigating environmental harm. Some people see the report in that light that it's, it's just about mitigating. Uh, I th personally, uh, and uh, other people, recognise that the authors were uh, trying to achieve the first thing. So they want to develop sustainable farming and shift more towards that, more towards quality and environmental protection. Um, but the fear is that it could, in, in, in practice and in implementation, it could be watered down and you end up with the second part, which is just about mitigating environmental harm. Government policy and training provision in, in, to support transition to sustainable farming, stronger research base, um, involving closer collaboration between DERA, AFB and universities. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, there the, was the, this issue of a, the need for a more joined up thinking, so a broad independent stakeholder forum bringing together um, NGO, academic, government, agri-food and farming sectors. Um, there, were all, there were also other uh, features as well that um, fell off this list. There, there, was, um, pr there were proposals for um, eradicating food poverty with a, a living wage, um, banning food waste um, and having a, 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 an education strategy that, 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 that had food at the heart, heart of it right from the beginning, from primary school right up to third sector. Um, and one person made this comment that you know, if, we had, if we ever did get into a lot of difficulty, you know, real, a real crisis, that there's a lot of people who don't even know how to cook food, let alone grow it. So this is one thing that they wanted to see was more emphasis on, cook, on food skills, food production, cooking, the whole range of, of, of things to do with food. Um, this, the two scenarios, as I mentioned, there was extreme weather events and the global energy crisis. Um, when these were, these were translated to a Northern Ireland level, the first one, uh, extreme weather events, what, what participants um, uh, believe would happen, we, we would experience high food and feed prices. Cereal growers here would, would gain. Livestock and dairy would, would lose um, because of the dependence on imported feed grain. Uh, there would be a risk of panic buying, um, increased food poverty, and potential for social disorder, but also potential for community solidarity. The kind of thing that you know, we saw in Greece when, when they had the crisis there, communities coming together and supporting each other and so on. Uh, in the longer term, a shift to cereal growing, like oats, uh, and mixed farming. Global energy crisis, uh, right, we've seen this already in 2008, rising cost of food and the three Fs, fuel, fertilizer, feed and so on, general inflation. Farms struggle to harvest crops because they're dependent on fossil, powered, fossil energy powered machinery um, and struggle to feed their livestock. Potential for food shortages, again, potential for social disorder or possibly a kind of dig for victory response with um, communities and uh, supported by the government rallying around and, and, and uh, re responding to this very positively. But again, it's a, you know, which way would it go? How will people be prepared for this? And in the longer term, it would res result in a shift to post-carbon, labour-intensive mixed farming but maybe a bit of damage to the environment along the way as well, as that, that would be less of a priority. Um, so to conclude, the, the interviews uh, are not uh, a big sample, so you can't, you know, I'm not claiming any great generalisation, but they do suggest that there is a, a shift in thinking towards uh, a strategic emphasis on quality of produce, 
in Northern Ireland and environmental standards, but genuine environmental standards that can be measured um, and, and you can stand over them. And it's not just a, mar a superficial marketing strategy. Um, scenario planning is, I believe, a valuable strategic tool for policy makers, particularly in a context of uncertainty and change. Uh, it's very good for engaging uh, a wide range of relevant stakeholders. Um, and maybe at this time, with the challenges and uncertainties of the, the Brexit brings, uh, and particularly to the agri-food sector, uh, it might be something that could contribute to po policy making in that area as well. Thank you.